Welcome to a brand new Football Manager series on YouTube. This is going to be titled, having 100% decided, but the club and team review. So we're going to go through teams that are in Football Manager 16 and we're just going to have a look at the squad itself, the youth system, we're going to have a look at finances, see how much transfer budget we've got, what players are out on loan, what sort of objectives you've got to achieve with that team. Just so, um, as the, when the new game's about to come out in a week's time, um, so it gives you guys a chance to sort of do a bit of analysis and see which team you actually want to manage when the game goes live. So we're going to start off, there's no alphabetical order, there's no bias, I'm going Arsenal as the first team, um, but I do want you to leave a comment to say which team you want to see next. So we're going to go through Premiership first. And then if there's enough interest and people want to see more, then we'll go to Championship, League One and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Arsenal, big club, lots of money, good team. Let's get into the details. So the first thing you'll get is obviously the personal message. He wants us from the owner, the club director, and he wants us to play possession football, attacking football and develop players using the club's youth system. Not a big deal, that's kind of how you want to play with Arsenal anyway, and you've got a great you set up, so quite happy with that. Next step we're going to have a look at is what they actually want you to achieve in your first season. So if you go over to the confidence section, so <clears throat> with the Premiership, their minimum expectation is that the team qualify for the Champions League. That's doable, okay. You're happy with that, I think that's fine. Uh, Semi-final of the FA Cup. Uh, don't really care about the Community Shield. And they don't really care about the Capital One Cup. Um, so they're the domestic competitions. Um, obviously, you know, if, if, you do, if you're struggling in the league a bit, maybe you're sort of hovering around 4th, 5th, then doing well in the League Cup can actually help keep your job. So that's a backup competition, really. But basically a place to play the youth players, as Arsenal do. Well, not recently, actually. But And in the Champions League, quarter-finals, which is Arsenal standard. Maybe not this season, but uh, up until now. So that's basically, I think, their achievable goals. The Champions League is going to be quite tricky, um, as is the FA Cup, because anything could happen. But the Champions League, I think, is definitely doable. Finances. We have, Jesus, £329 million in the bank. We have a transfer kitty on the right here of £63 million and a wage budget of £2.6 million. We're currently spending two point one, so you've got half a million, so that's a nice... So you get five players on hundred grand a week without even selling anybody. That is very nice indeed. Um, let's... On, let's see if they'll... Give us some more. No, you might be able to if you beg. Okay, so that's the finances done. We, we won't go through the club's history. You guys know most of these histories, especially if you're a supporter. We will have a quick look at the Transfers, so the players that have been loaned out from the club, uh, Chesney's on loan to <coughs> Roma, so he's a good keeper still, um, he could be a decent backup keeper, let's have a look, he's still a really good keeper, so he could come back and possibly be your first choice, he's worth five and a half million, you should be able to get some money for him if you decide to sell him, same as Carl Jenkinson, I don't think you're really looking to keep him, but he's worth some money, Sergeant Abbey is a decent young player, I'm not sure if he's going to make the grade and a few others that are pretty decent um, they're all out on loan for the season so we start with Jack Wilshire sick note being injured with a broken leg six to seven months and Danny Welbeck out for seven eighth months which both long-term injuries um, that you the game will start having so you just have to deal with that now let's get into we'll go we'll work our way up so we're just we're just going to go through a rough overview. I'm not going to go through every player and stuff like this. So we're just going to have a quick look at the under-18s. Um, 
look at their sort of best players. So we've got Vlad Dragomir. What a great name. Uh, attacking midfield and midfield. Centre midfield. Decent young player. Um, yeah, not amazing for a, for a potential five star. I think he's got a long way to go. So he, okay, he's potential five star, but he's not even one star. So he's gonna need to get lucky. He's gonna need to tutor him. You're gonna need to give him game time or loan time at decent clubs. It's gonna be hard to get that. I I would probably venture to say that that's not really gonna happen when they've got that much distance between their current ability and their potential ability. Next up, we've got Doniel Mellon. Mellon, not Mellon. 16-year-old um, striker. He can also play on the wings and behind the forward. Same again, really. Two of the biggest stats when looking at a youngster to see how well they're going to improve is <clears throat> determination and work rate. They're two important stats. Um, the higher those are, the more likely they are to reach their potential ability. And if you look at his... 8 work rate, 7 determination. Yeah, it's not pretty. He, Much like the other guy, going to need a ton of work. So, unusually, um, the under-18s, there's not much there. Just hope for a good youth intake in, in March. And uh, So, we'll go through their massive youth team, which, like I said, again, we won't go through everybody. I'm sure there might be a couple of hidden gems that could actually do well, but we'll go through the big few players. Serge Nabry is the obvious big one. Um, really good young player, really versatile. It's a nice player to have on the bench. He's basically, his favoured positions are attacking midfield right. I, I would say attacking midfield right, like that's a thing. A winger, right winger, <laughs> or um, advanced playmaker is his suitable role. And he likes playing as a winger. He's got lovely overall stats for a 19 year old, valued at 7.5 million. Looks like he could become a quality player. Determination 13, work rate 14. So, okay. Um, there's a few sort of weaker points in his game. Um, but he looks like a quality player. I think he, he could definitely become a first teamer. Um, and at least somebody that's a good squad player because he can play pretty much six positions. Next up, we've got. Gedeon Zelahi Zelalem Zelalem Okay, of course, makes sense. American kid, 18 years old, can play centre mid or attacking mid. Decent all round, bit low on the determination, decision making's a slight issue. Not too bad, not sure if he's going to make it, to be honest. Not Arsenal anyway. He'll probably become a decent player. Um, maybe if a bit of luck and uh, gives him good tutoring, he might, he could make it, I suppose. <coughs> Ainsley Maitland Niles. Now, this is a youngster with a lot of promise in real life. And he looks pretty decent on this. Another versatile player. Preferred positions are as a winger or a centre mid. Um, Determination's a little bit low. I'd like that to be a little bit higher. Uh, physical stats are okay. He's only 17, so he's got a ton of time. So those physical stats are gonna are gonna jump up quite a bit. Actually, a pretty good-looking player, to be honest. Like I said, the only thing is sort of his determination's a bit low. But that's about it. He's a decent all-round player. I think he could become a, a decent player and another versatile player, which is always nice. And at only 17, could be a quality, quality player. And then Tuba Agpom, another good youngster that a lot of people talk about. Plays best as a defensive forward, which is interesting. Um, 19 years old, really good physicals for a 19-year-old. Acceleration 18, pace 16, good strength, good stamina. He looks like a quality player. Great determination and work rate. His positioning and concentration need work. And a few of his technicals are a little bit low. But he looks like he could be a really good player. And lastly, we'll look at Ben Crowley. a cent Another centre mid. 
There's a lot of midfielders. A lot of good midfielders. Another 17-year-old. Um, sort of random physicals. He's got a couple of decent stats and then some some sort of struggling. Natural fitness is, is an issue. That tends to... It does go up, but not massively. Um, Stonation's only 10. Work rate's 11. I think he's going to struggle. He'll be like a, a decent you know championship player or something like that but i don't think he'll quite make the grade now on to the beasts that are arsenal's first team i won't go through these too much details because you kind of know most of these players you know theo walcott can run really fast you know peter Cech's an amazing goalkeeper but let's just sort of have a look at the depth of the squad so we've got peter Cech and david ospina Great backup to have there. Um, how long has he been? At? So he has been here too, because he's. I was just looking at him because he's eleven million. You could you could make some money if it, it and get a sort of cheaper backup goalkeeper. Um, Debushi, much like in real life, seems to be done. I would say, and Hector Bellerin. If you look at his physicals, twenty pace, nineteen acceleration. This kid is absolute quality 20 years old he will be your first choice right back for the next 10 years plus um, so you might need a backup right back that's so I won't go through sort of formations I'll just go through sort of standard positions and then you know you can work out the rest Callum Chambers obviously bought from Southampton decent all-round player can play center back or right back equally well good all-round player nothing outstanding but I think he could I'm not sure he's not going to be world class but I think he'll be a decent squad player for a number of years Nacho Monreal not bad we kind of know about him he's he's decent he's a good player he is 29 so he's he's not going to get any better um, and then your other left back is, is Kieran Gibbs as we know um, decent player that could be an area that you might look to to improve. Koscielny, one of my favourite centre backs in real life. I think this kid, this guy, kid, he's twenty nine, is absolute quality. As I said, he's twenty nine, so you know he's going to have three, four good years left in him. He's going to be a first choice. Mertesacker, quality player. I'm surprised actually, eleven pace. Um, not the quickest. That's the only thing. But. And, uh, and he's also 30 as well. Um, so he's a good defender um, for a season or two, I think. But then you'll be you'll be needing to look to get some youngsters through to replace the two older guys here. Um, and the lastly is Paulista, which is their newer centre-back. 24, so he can still improve. Really good. I haven't looked, I haven't looked at these players on FM16, so I'm seeing them for the first time. But... Yeah, he looks like a quality player. He looks like he... It says he's... Potential is only three stars, but I like the look of this guy. He's got all the main stats. He's got a good work rate. He's got determination. He's 24. He's got room to improve. I think he's he's a good player. Okay, so... Midfield, we've got Michael... Art uh, Mikel, Michael. Or Michael Arteta. Uh, Mikel Arteta... Good all-rounder, 33 years old, probably going to be back up. Flamini, what, what do you say about Flamini? Another 31-year-old, decent defensive midfielder. This one I'm interested to see, the cock blocker, Francis Cochlan. Um, yeah, he's got a boost this year. He's a, he's a good player, 24 years old. I think if you're playing a defensive midfielder, I think he's a he's a ball winner. I think he'll be he'll be your man for a number of years, and then I would probably maybe keep Flamini as backup if you're playing defensive midfield. Maybe get rid of Arteta. It's on seventy grand a week. So then we go on to Aaron Ramsey, versatile quality player. We all know about him. Still only twenty four. Geez, still only twenty four. Great player, a little bit injury prone, but yeah, fantastic player. Theo Walcott, he's the pace merchant. Um, 
right wing up front decent his stats are good his physicals obviously his pace is, is everything in his game if you took his pace out if you made those acceleration and pace 15 you'd kind of go yeah he's all right i think it's somebody especially for that value that you might look to sell unless you're playing him up front maybe because your the formation or the tactic you're using is is really pace pace based Joel Campbell is an interesting one. So he's 23 now, so he's really not broken into the first team. Um, very versatile, play on both wings, play up front. Half decent. Might want to sell him for the money. Never going to be a world beater, but he could do a job. Santi Cazola. Another 30 year old, there's quite a number in this squad. His physicals are just starting to drop off, um, but technical, mental, amazing. Massively versatile, just like a lot of the other players. Great player. But you, you need to start thinking about the future because there's a number of 30 year olds in this team. The Ox. I love the Ox in real life. <clears throat> in this game, he looks quality as well. He's only 21. He's definitely a keeper, in my eyes. He's got all the skills to be a really good winger. Both sides, yep. We all know about the Ox. Mr. Sickno. Yeah, it's a tricky one, this. It's kind of like if, if I was talking about Liverpool and you talk about Daniel Sturridge, you go, oh, he's a really good player. But he's so injury prone that he's valued it a lot and maybe you could get somebody that plays more games. <laughs> It's a punt, this one. His physicals let him down. Um, and it's kind of up to you if you want somebody that's great but injury prone or you want to cash in and get 30 plus million for him. Danny Welbeck. Interesting, this one. It's, he's got good stats. Valued at 30 million, apparently. I think he's maybe a tad overrated in this he has got the long term injury but yeah really good player still only 24 this guy I've, I've never heard of this I've heard of him um, I'm sure the Arsenal fans are crying out at me at the moment but obviously a good youngster 17 year olds he's in the first team randomly but another geez, all the Arsenal players just literally play everywhere in midfield and up front as well Let's have a look. Summation 14, work rate 13, decent. Pretty good physicals for a 17 year old. He could become a really good player, I think. I don't think he'd be world class, but he's going to be a good player and versatile, as we said before. Alright, the frog eyed wonder, Meza Ozil. Kind of like Santi Cazorla, but just a, a younger version. Amazing technicals, amazing mentals okay physicals you know decent physicals but uh, yeah quality player no need to sort of sit on him Alex Iwobi <laughs> okay he's in the first team um, again broken record versatile player decent nothing amazing stands out for me really a loan move might be good. Alexis Sanchez, as a Liverpool fan, I hate what looking at him because we almost signed him and then you stole him away. <laughs> I can understand his decision, to be fair. But yeah, monster. Probably the best player in the team. By, uh, by a distance. 26, you're going to have him for a good number of years. And Oliver Drood. 28 years old, another one that's edging towards 30. So there's definitely... It'd be an interesting project, Arsenal, because there's a lot of rebuilding to do. In, in two, three years' time, you know, four of your best six players are going to be declining. So that it will be an interesting rebuild job. But, you know, quality player, really good target man. Also, he plays advanced forward, but he, target, he's basically a, he is a target man. So let me just check if there's anything else we really want to go into. Um, one thing I just will look at is what just to see what they think. So they're going four one two three narrow four three two. 
So that's the, what their sort of thinking is a better formation. Well, okay. Maybe not listen to the staff and pick your own formation. You've seen the players, so I'll I'll leave that leave that to you guys. I think there's a, I think that about covers it. If there's anything else that you want me to cover in other episodes, if I missed anything that you find, that you think is important, and like I said, leave a comment to say which club you'd like to see next. We'll go through the whole Premiership, but I'll do it in order that you pick them. So let me know who you want to see next. Tell me if there's anything I've forgotten. Um, please leave a comment if this is something of interest to you and you want to see other teams because I have no idea. I'm brand new to YouTube. I thought this would be a great way to introduce someone to the team so they can have a quick look through before they pick them, uh, do a bit of background work, so to speak. So thank you very much for listening and watching. Uh, please comment and link, link. Please like and subscribe. You can tell I'm new at this. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.